Hi everyone! Welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I am so happy that you are here with me today for another Test Tube Tuesday. As you know, on Tuesdays we do all things scientific and today is no different. Today we will be talking about surface tension and we'll also be doing a bunch of really cool experiments. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also if you really like what we're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on to surface tension. Have you ever heard that term before? I want you to imagine that you are going outside on a summer morning early in the day and you see some dew drops on the grass blades. Have you ever done that? Here's a picture just to remind yourself what it looks like. Have you ever wondered why water, which is a liquid, is able to bead up like it does? The reason that it is able to do that is because of surface tension. Surface tension happens because the molecules in water bind together or cohere to form a surface layer that resists light pressure. So if you were to apply strong pressure, so you were to walk over to that dew drop and you were to squish it between your fingers, that drop form would not survive, right? But if you leave it undisturbed, that drop will stay a drop. And that's because of surface tension. There is tension on the surface of that water that allows it, that causes it, that makes it stay in a drop formation. Okay, so let's do an experiment here and see the way that surface tension works. So I have here a baking dish. It's filled just with regular water. I'm going to let it settle just a little bit and then I'm going to drop some pepper on. I want you to make a hypothesis, an educated guess, as to what is going to happen when I sprinkle this pepper on the water. What do you think? Do you have your idea? Okay, let's see. All right, so I am sprinkling pepper all over this dish. And as you can see, it is staying on the top of the water. That is because of surface tension. The surface tension is holding up the pepper. All right, now I'm going to put some soap on a Q-tip and then I'm going to put the soap in the water. Do you think anything is going to change? Make your guess, make your hypothesis. Actually, you know, before I do this, I'm going to put my finger in the water. What do you think will happen? Will anything change with that? Let's see. No, it doesn't look like it. The pepper, some of the pepper stuck to my finger, but nothing really happened to the pepper. All right, so now what do you think will happen with the soap? Let's watch. Wow. Wow, wasn't that interesting? Let's see if we can get it to happen again. Look at that. So the reason that that happened is because soap is a surfactant. So the molecules of a surfactant have hydrophilic or water-loving ends and hydrophobic or water-repelling ends. So when the soap goes into the water, all of the hydrophilic, the water-loving ends, align with the water, and all of the hydrophobic, those water-repelling pieces, align with the air above. So what that does is it creates a new surface film of soap which interrupts the cohesive forces between the water molecules. So we saw that here, right? We put the soap in and the pepper was repelled away from it. The cohesive molecules holding that surface tension of the water together were disrupted. So we saw that when um, the pepper was repelled, but we can also see it now as we continue to watch this baking dish. The pepper that stayed right at the top of the surface before the soap was introduced now is falling to the bottom of the dish and falling to the bottom of this water because the soap has disrupted that water, that surface tension. 
I want to take just a couple seconds here and mention one other thing about the surfactant properties of soap. It is those properties that are responsible for soap's ability to clean clothes. Soap is able to disrupt the cohesion of the water molecules as we know, but that allows the water to soak into the clothes in a laundry machine, getting our clothes cleaner and getting your hands cleaner if you use soap to wash your hands. So this is one of the many ways that we find that science and soap make our lives better. Make sure, especially right now, that you are using soap every time you wash your hands. That gets you extra clean, and now you know why. All right, let's see what else we can do to visualize surface tension. Okay, I have here another baking dish full of just plain water. And I also have a makeshift boat. I have made this out of craft foam. If you do this at home, you can use craft foam or styrofoam. You can even use a piece of cardstock for at least a couple minutes before it gets wet, completely wet. But so I am going to put this boat into the water. It is right now, you can see on the top of the water, that surface tension is keeping it up. But now, knowing what you know about soap, I'm wondering what your thought will be, what you think will happen if I put some soap behind this boat. So I've put just a little bit of soap on a Q-tip, and then I am going to put it behind the boat. What do you think will happen? Remember that pepper. All right, well, let's see, okay? Here we go. Look at that. The soap, again, disrupted the surface tension, which caused the boat to move away from the soap. All right, I don't know if it'll work again because I have, as you know, already put soap in here, but let's see if we can get it to go one more time. Oh, it's kind of moving away. So this is kind of a one trick wonder, but it is really fun to watch it the first time. If you wanted to do it a second time, you would need to dump this water, rinse out your dish to make sure that there's no soap residue left, refill it, and then you can amaze your friends again. All right, let's see what else we've got. All right, so now I have a glass of plain water here, and I am going to put this paper clip that I have on top of the water on the surface tension. I am going to do my best not to disrupt the surface tension with the tips of my fingers as I put this on the, on the water. So let's see if I can get that to just kind of float right there. There we go. So the, t the trick with that is to just be super gentle as you put the paper clip in. You don't want to drop it from a high distance above the water. You just want to gently place it. If you can't get it to float, you can put a piece of tissue paper on the water and then put the paper clip on top of the tissue paper and then very gently remove the tissue paper out from under the paper clip and that way it will float just like it is right now on the surface tension. Okay, so it's floating. If I put my finger in, nothing happens. What do you think will happen if I put some soap in the water? What happens to the surface tension when soap enters into it? All right, make your guess, and now let's see. It took a minute for that soap to get there, but you saw that once the soap finally was able to disrupt enough of the surface tension, the, the paper clip just fell, right? So again, we see that soap is disrupting the surface tension of water. It's a pretty cool thing, isn't it? All right, let's switch gears just a little bit, still talking about surface tension, but let's see if we can watch it form ourselves and see if we can control it a bit. So I have here a bowl of water. There's no soap in this. I have a penny, and then I also have a pipette. And I am going to see how many drops of water this penny will hold. It's probably more than you think. And the reason for that is because of surface tension. So before I get going, I'm curious. Make a guess, how many drops of water do you think this penny will hold? And then let's see. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So you can already see the surface tension at work right there because it's a drop format, right? All right, so we were at five, so let's see. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Look at that. We have 40 drops of water on that penny. Let's see. Let's keep going. 41, 42, 43. It looks like about 43. I don't know. The pipe that got a little bit away from me. But now I want to see if we can disrupt that surface tension. So when we get to about maybe 35, let's stop and talk again. Okay. All right, so obviously we could touch this and we can break the surface tension. Do you have another idea as to how we could break the surface tension? Aha! What have we been talking about all along? Soap. All right, so now we're going to watch the surface tension on this penny as the soap goes in and, oh, just instantly the water just drains out. So it works the same. In all of these experiments, you can see that the soap is reducing the surface tension. All right, I have saved my favorite experiment for last. This one involves milk instead of water, but milk has surface tension just like water does. So I have a pan here of milk, and then I also have some food coloring that I am going to just drop a few drops of right here in the center of my pan. So I've got some red there, Let's see, I've got a couple drops of blue, and I've got a couple drops of yellow. I am curious what you think is going to happen if I put soap in the middle along with that food coloring. Remember, the soap disrupts the surface tension. It decreases it. So what will happen? All right, let's watch. And we have colored fireworks as the food coloring tries to move away from the soap. Isn't that fun? All right, I have one more thing I want to try. Yes, so if you can see here, as I flip the soap around, or flip the milk around with the soap in it, you can see, if you look very closely, those little balls forming. That is surface tension at work. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed learning about surface tension today. I hope you've had a chance to do some of these experiments. It's crazy what fun you can have with just regular household items, isn't it? Well, I would love if you've gotten a chance to do some of these to see you being a scientist in action. Please ask a grown up to take a video or a picture and put those on our Facebook page. I can't wait to see all of our young scientists. Well, I look forward to seeing you at our next Kidding Around lesson on Thursday. We'll be doing our normal Thoughtful Thursday lesson. I can't wait to be kind with you and to spread some love around the world. But this wraps up our Test Tube Tuesday lesson. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. Thanks so much for Kidding Around with me. I will see you next time.